Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Dr. Achita Nanda. I'm an additional professor in the Department of Biochemistry, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Raipur, India. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on disorders of copper metabolism. The outline of this presentation is as follows. I will cover copper metabolism followed by some disorders of copper metabolism, which will be discussed under pathogenesis, clinical features, and diagnosis and treatment. The copper is an important trace element of the biological systems with a requirement of one to two milligrams per day. Its absorption, distribution, and elimination are highly regulated. It has multitude functions that starts with its ability to adopt two different redox states in the oxidized and the reduced states, serving as a catalytic factor in redox chemistry, like the cytochrome C oxidase in electron transport chain to provide energy. Other enzymes like superoxide dismutase, a free radical scavenger, peroxidase for iron absorption, dopamine beta hydroxylase for catecholamine synthesis, monoamine oxidase for catecholamine metabolism, tyrosinase for pigment formation, and lysyl oxidase for tissue integrity also depend on copper. There are also some copper-dependent transcription factors that regulate gene expression. Absorption of copper takes place primarily in the duodenum, the absorption not being influenced by the amount of copper stored in the body. The copper transporter receptor 1, that is CTR1, is responsible for uptake of copper by intestinal epithelial cells. A major portion 25 to 60% is transported out by ATP7A, which is a transmembrane copper transporting P type ATPase mutated in Menke's disease to the basolateral surface, into the portal circulation, and to liver. This protein is expressed in the intestine and other tissues, but not in the liver. In other tissues, ATP7A supplies copper to the organelles to synthesize certain enzymes like peptidyl alpha monooxygenase, tyrosinase, and lysyl oxidase. The rest of the copper gets bound to metallothionine and is lost in feces during shedding of intestinal epithelial cells, with a small amount also getting lost in the urine. In the liver, the copper can be stored or carried by binding to aposeruloplasmin as ceruloplasmin to systemic circulation or is excreted into intestinal lumen after biliary excretion. The copper enters the liver through CTR1 and then gets complexed with metallothionine or glutathione. Copper is helped by various chaperone proteins and is carried to specific proteins and organelles for synthesis of certain cellular enzymes. It also gets incorporated to aposeruloplasmin at the trans-Golgi apparatus with the help of ATP7B transmembrane copper transporting P-type ATPase protein, which is a product of Wilson's disease gene to form ceruloplasmin that enters into the systemic circulation. In response to increased hepatocellular copper content, the ATP7B relocates to a vesicular compartment close to the canaliculi membrane to cause biliary copper excretion. Whenever the copper concentration is low, ATP7B incorporates copper into aposeruloplasmin to generate holoceruloplasmin, but 
at high concentration of copper, it expedites the excretion of copper through the biliary system. Thus, ATP7B acts as a sensing and monitoring device for copper within hepatocytes. The copper glutathione complex through canalicular multispecific organ anion transporter is another minor route of hepatocellular copper excretion. There are two disorders, inborn errors of copper metabolism, which are well characterized but rare in nature. These are Wilson's disease and Menke's disease. Both these disorders are as a result of mutation in the copper transporting P-type ATPs, ATP7B and ATP7A respectively. Further, there is a group of disorders that are a combination of environmental and genetic causes. These are the infantile and idiopathic copper toxicosis and tyrolean infantile cirrhosis. Wilson's disease is a monogenic autosomal recessive disorder of copper toxicity. The mutation that can result is a structural or functional defect in the protein, both of which can cause severe disease. As mentioned earlier, the product of this gene, ATP7B, is required for synthesis of enzymatically active ceruloplasmin and biliary copper excretion. Impaired function of this protein results in reduced excretion of copper leading to pathologic accumulation in liver. The excess copper in liver exceeds the storage capacity of metallothionine. So copper gets deposited in lysosomes which through oxidative stress and free radicals mediate the damage of liver mitochondria resulting in hepatocyte inflammation and damage. This spills over to plasma with toxicity of the extrahepatic organs, including brain, cornea, and erythrocytes. The major presentation in Wilson's disease involves hepatic, neurological, and psychiatric, also ophthalmological and renal systems. Hepatic presentation like fatigue, anorexia, abdominal pain, nausea, jaundice, although self-limiting, severe coagulopathy and encephalopathy are observed due to hepatic steatosis, inflammation, fibrosis, cirrhosis, and liver failure. A Coombs negative hemolytic anemia results from direct toxic effects of copper on red cell membranes. Copper gets deposited in the brain, primarily in the basal ganglia, which results in symptoms of Parkinsonism like dysarthria, clumsiness, tremor, drooling, gait disturbances, mask-like facies, and deterioration of writing. Sometimes psychiatric symptoms like changes in personality, depression, and anxiety can be observed. The ophthalmologic symptoms show the presence of copper and sulfur-rich granules in the decimate membrane of cornea, giving it a golden brown ring or a greenish discoloration in the limbus known as the kesher flesher ring under slit lamp. The associated renal symptoms can be microscopic hematuria or Fankanese syndrome. The Leipzig criteria, published by the European Association for the Study of the Liver and validated in adults and children, should be used for the diagnosis of Wilson's disease, which considers both the clinical and laboratory data to establish the diagnosis. The clinical data includes presence of the kesher flesher rings and neurological manifestations. The laboratory testing includes ceruloplasmin, urine copper, 
hepatic copper, Coombs test for hemolytic anemia, and molecular testing for ATP cell B mutation. When a score of 1 to 2 is achieved, it excludes Wilson's disease, while a score of 3 suggests further evaluation. The diagnosis is established after achieving at least four points. There are more than 600 mutations of ATP7B gene. The majority of mutations are missense mutation with few mutations for specific populations. It is very rare to find large deletions. When mutations at both alleles are identified in the proband, acute diagnosis of Wilson's disease can be made. Direct genetic testing, focusing on sequence analysis of ATP7B mutation hotspots are the mode of detection of mutations. Copper chelators like penicillamin promote excretion of copper in urine. It inhibits the accumulation of copper in hepatocellular lysozymes and solubilizes copper for mobilization from these particles. It also inhibits collagen cross-linking and has some immunosuppressive properties. Triamine or triethylene tetraamine dihydrochloride is the usual second line treatment for patients who are intolerant of penicillamine. Triantine chelates copper and increases urinary copper excretion and may interfere with intestinal absorption of copper. Zinc salts increases metallothionine protein synthesis in intestine to trap the copper deposited in the intestinal cells so that it gets excreted in the feces. As penicillamine is a pyridoxine antagonist, supplementation with this vitamin is recommended. In extreme cases of liver failure, there may be a need of liver transplantation. However, early detection and with good compliance to treatment, there is an excellent prognosis of this disease. Menkes disease is an X-linked inherited recessive disease caused by mutation of the ATP7A gene. This gene is expressed in all tissues except the liver. ATP7A protein along with the ATP7B protein function as sensors of intracellular copper concentration. ATP7A acts as an intracellular pump to transport copper into the trans-Golgi network for incorporation into copper requiring enzymes, including dopamine beta hydroxylase and also mediates copper removal from cells. Mutations of this gene are associated with loss of functions with defective copper transport across intestine, brain, and placenta. In the intestine, there is accumulation of excess copper due to failure of copper efflux, resulting in systemic copper insufficiency and reduced activities of various copper-dependent enzymes. At the blood-brain barrier, copper efflux is hampered, resulting in accumulation of copper in these cells and therefore failure of copper uptake in the brain. The associated clinical features include hypothermia, neuronal degeneration in the cerebral hemispheres, cerebellum, and spinocerebellar tracts with associated demyelination, mental retardation, and failure to thrive. Cherubic phase with abnormalities in hair, which is steely and depigmented, also appear. Skeletal changes due to connective tissue defect like flaring and cupping of ribs and lateral and medial spur formation on the proximal or distal femoral and humeral metaphysis with bone fractures. Low levels are found in, for example, plasma, liver and brain, while excessive accumulation has been documented in other tissues such as intestinal mucosa, kidney and placenta. There is no single sensitive and specific test for diagnosis of copper-related diseases. 
the serum copper and cellular plasmin are decreased which is reliable only beyond 6 weeks of life decreased hepatic copper and increased urine copper excretion is observed early detection can be facilitated by elevated dihydroxyphenylalanine and dihydroxyphenylacetic acid with reduced neurochemicals like epinephrine and norepinephrine and of their metabolites defective function of dopamine beta hydroxylase also leads to increased urine ratios of hva and vma there is increased urinary excretion of beta 2 microglobulin diverse mutations are seen in atp7a in menkes disease it is advisable that copper histidinate be administered as early as possible in absence of early diagnosis and treatment prognosis is bad a milder allelic variant of menkes disease which is the occipital horn syndrome occurs due to a molecular defect of leaky splice junction or hyomorphic missense mutation in atp7a gene with only 20 to 30% residual activity the symptoms observed include dysautonomia related to dopamine beta hydroxylase deficiency and connective tissue infantile and childhood copper toxicosis syndrome encompasses copper toxicosis occurring in infants and young children seen in many parts of the world and is usually associated with high levels of hepatic copper caused by high concentration of copper in drinking water or food indian childhood cirrhosis restricted to the indian subcontinent occurs in infants who are fed milk stored in brass or copper containers characterized by increased hepatic urinary and serum copper with rapidly progressive liver cirrhosis this has become rare due to education of families for not cooking eating and serving in copper and brass vessels idiopathic copper toxicity is similar to the indian childhood cirrhosis and has been named as indian childhood cirrhosis light disease but caused by high concentration of copper in drinking water or food like the contaminated spring water in endemic tyrolean infantile cirrhosis it is also suspected to be a rare disorder due to unidentified genetic defect promising modes of detection and therapy herald future directions newborn screening program is being developed to enable early detection and hence early treatment of patients for menkes disease and occipital horn syndrome for therapeutic challenge adenovirus mediated gene therapy and liver directed gene therapy for wilson's disease is being tried to enable a healthy life Thank you for joining me on this pearl of laboratory medicine on disorders of copper metabolism. For more like this as well as articles, podcasts and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.